Oops, cat. In 95 masks, which one is the right one for you? A very interesting question. One of the other things that people are doing online is telling people where to go and get N95 masks if they don't have any. Um, frankly, that's an appalling thing. If you're a prepper and you have watched my channel for at least a year and you don't have N95 masks, you're really not prepping. You're fantasizing about being a prepper and you're fantasizing about coping with an SHTF. You should have these already. If you don't have them, really? So apart from being uh, expert epidemiologists and biochemists, a lot of preppers online are also apparently occupational health specialists as well. So there's a lot of advice out there online, some of it's absolute garbage. The only thing that I would actually recommend is uh, Dr. Bones and Nurse Amy. They actually know what they're talking about. Everybody else who's bought a mask and is telling you how to use it, if they haven't used it professionally, they're actually talking out of their behinds. Over the last 10 years, 5 years, 2 years, you've bought N95s when they've been on sale and you found them and you've got them, and you're now faced with the possibility of having to actually wear one if you have to go out and be in close contact with people in the community or in your house if indeed somebody in your house comes down with NCOV 2019 or measles or anything else. So which mask do you use and how do you fit it to your face? So there's actually science to this and you should have it fitted by a professional but I'm assuming you haven't got access to that but you have access to N95s. So I'm going to talk about how you actually test them. So these three types, they all work for me but this is the better type for me because I actually get tested at work so that's good for me. Now over time as you get fatter and thinner these don't work. Now the important thing is beards. Clean shaven when you're out of the house. The preppers who have beards now who are prepping for this, the fact that they haven't shaved is huge normalcy bias. They say, I will shave when the time comes to do so. What a dick. Sorry, you're a dick. You haven't got the first clue about SHTF or pandemics. You're in your house, an intruder breaks in. You have one of these in your pocket and you're able to put it on, okay? There's a pandemic, that intruder might have the virus and be asymptomatic but you're not going to shave your face so this actually works the other thing a lot of people are buying cheap pa uh, paper masks and once any mask that goes around your ear in my opinion you shouldn't have any mask that has a valve on it you shouldn't have they're not good for airborne viruses okay so these are the only masks that are actually going to provide some level of protection if you don't have these do what the Irish guy does use a scarf Use the paper mask but have another cloth mask on the outside. If you don't have them, and this is perfectly valid, a very thin comfortable bandana with a thick bandana on top of it. Remembering the key thing here is to have it sealed so nothing is coming in from the sides or from the nose. And that when you finish with it you can easily dispose of it. If you can't dispose of it, Praxis Prepper has a video where he shows how to wash and clean these. I do not recommend that but it's a very useful video if this is a prolonged pandemic. Okay, so this is the uh, A2010 3M. It shows a picture of the person the right way up. When you look on the inside, it's like this. Now what you'll often see nurses do is this. Not actually recommended, but I always do it. Now you have two straps. You hold the straps together adjust your glasses. Remember you don't want to be touching your face during infections. When you put this on, oh, one strap beneath the eye and one above. Okay? And then this screws like that. Strap here uncomfortable, strap here uncomfortable, not touching the ears. No crossover. Straight, straight. And then you have a metal bar in here and you seal it. So the mask is on, but does it work? The way you make it work is having done this, you then get a very strong smelling solution. And what you do is you sit there and you count, or you sing. One, two, three, four, five, six, normal talking voice. They then get you to talk loudly, and then they get you to move your head up and down for about 30 seconds to a minute. Okay, and then side to side. Now the key thing here is we're actually human beings. So the very key test to this fits is this one. Gently.
gently for 30 seconds. Does it fit? Can you smell anything? There might be slight smell. If you have glasses on, and everybody should have goggles or glasses on for this, because if it's airborne, it's going in the eyeball, okay? Swim goggles, great. Have a lot of swim goggles. When you finish them, drop them into bleach, let them dry off, then you can reuse them. Strong bead solutions. Again, a simple Google. You can figure out how to make bleach solution. How do you take this off? Well, let's ignore gowns and everything else. If you have gloves on, get rid of the gloves. Wash your hands. You don't want dirty touching. Okay? So the outside of this is saturated, potentially in virus. The outside. Saturated. So any touching of this, whoa, don't. Gloves off, wash your hands. Get the lower strap. Move the lower strap to there. Maintaining integrity but not touching the white. Get the other strap between the two fingers. You then got control and gently, not breathing, gently. So you drop it. You drop it in the bin or you drop it into whatever. And then you wash your hands again. Another thing with hands, you want to have t-shirts for this type of thing. Okay? Your outerwear, if you're using outerwear to protect you, when you take it off, you want to avoid touching the outsides and again, dump it into something in the entranceway of your hallway in bleach solution before you wash it in hot temperatures. Okay. Now what about this mask? Slightly different. Of course, you should have enough masks to know. When you open this up, you have two pieces of metal in here. So people think it's better, but it's not. This is designed for different types of faces. But you have the two straps. Again, get the two straps under the chin, both straps over, both straps under the ear, lower one there and top one there. Having done that, put this up and seal it. Now I routinely use this one for casual contact at work. It's not completely sealed for me, but it's far more comfortable and stylish than the white one. Again, 30 seconds of talking, getting up, moving, moving your head, going up and down. All the actions you take. When you put the mask on you might think it's sealed, but if you move your head and go down it may not be. Again taking them off, see how it is with the ear? Not crossed over at the back. Bottom one, top one, and off. And this one's actually a lot easier to take off safely. The 3M devices tend to go boom, and that's not a good thing. This is also 3M. This one's really getting a short supply. These fit young uh, adults and women who are thin. So most nurses who are under the age of 30 are like that. Kid is the exception of the over the age of 30. So we're actually finding these are starting to run out. When you open it up, these don't need to be individual packets, right? They don't. But they need to be clean and dry and never have water on them and not be stained. This one again, 3M. This one tells you the 3M is going to be this way, not this way. You have the two straps on, so you get the straps. Now these are actually attached with staples. It's just staples. When you open it up, you will see that inside and that. So you open it up. This is called kind of the duck build variety. Two straps over the head. Lower one under the ears, top one there, get hold of this, goes like that. My face is too fat for this, it really will open up here for me. Again, take the time, get it there, when you believe it's secure, open up the strong smelling solution, talk for 30 seconds, move your head for 30 seconds up and down. Can you smell anything? If the answer is no, you're safe. You have to take it off. Gloves off, wash your hands. Lower strap. And top strap. And then dispose or wash if you want to do what Praxis did. So you saw in those three, three different methods of handling the removal. Okay? So 
These are the only type of masks that will protect you from an airborne virus. They're not 100% protective. You have to have a sealed unit for that. So why not use a gas mask? The reason I wouldn't recommend using a gas mask is the whole outside of the gas mask will be covered in viral material, especially the filter. When you take the gas mask off, it's designed for nuclear chemical. The biological aspect of them, when you use for that in the army, you are sprayed down with a strong bleach solution before you remove it. Okay, That's not an option we're going to have. It's expensive, it's fiddly, it's short term, it's kind of daft because you can't hear or see anything if you've got them on properly. And it's not a provided solution when you have paper masks that are actually going to do about the same job. So the N95 mask is not a cure and it's not a prevention for airborne infection. It's a method of reducing the impact of the virus. The best thing to do is to segregate and avoid people with the virus. When you can't do that and you have to be in close contact, use the mask. Now you'll see lots of health advice online that says you do not need N95 masks unless you're spending 15 minutes or more in close contact with the patient. This is absolute garbage. This is a made up number based on SARS and even in SARS there was a few patients in SARS called super spreaders. You'd get it if you were in that room with them for less than 15 minutes. So as a prepper you don't want to be hysterical. You don't want to buy 20,000 cases of legacy which is really bad food because the society is going to fall and never come back because of this. So they will not fall. This is Spanish flu. If you lose one to three percent of the population over the next six months society will wobble, stagger, run around like a drunken bum and it'll come back and it'll actually come back with a, an economic boost after something like that. A year, two years later, apart from the memorials, the world will be fine and intact. So don't be killing your own, uh, your neighbours and stuff like that because you'll get, there will be, it will be found out and it'll be done. But the other tip of the day I wanted to give you this is gloves, nitrile gloves. These are actually great as prepared, I believe prepared and awesome says, if you put these on underneath uh, winter gloves it actually helps uh, keep your hands warm in the winter. Uh, you want a pair that fit you and these are good. The cheap vinyl ones are okay but I don't recommend them. Get all the good quality ones. These can be put in bleach and dried out. It's quite expensive and it's not recommended for obvious reasons but in poor countries of the world that's what they do in healthcare. They use one pair of gloves a day and they wash it. You can also leave these on and wash on the outside of the glove but it's not recommended. So one of the things I'm doing, uh, and I'm going to do a video on what to do if you don't have gear, is I'm actually going to remove my ring. And I'm going to deal with Becky. The other one is Canadian content for the Canadians. Canada's, I've mentioned this before. In Canada there is contact, which is we don't think you have it, but you, we think you've been in contact with somebody who's infected. And then there's Presumptive. Presumptive means that one of the provincial testing centres has tested you and found you positive for the virus. Definitive in Canada means that having been presumptive, the National Testing Centre in Winnipeg, which is quite busy right now and is going to get busier, has also retested and also found you positive. The provincial testing is good enough. If it's presumptive, you've got it. So that's it for me. Uh, stay calm, stay safe. Make sensible precautions, do things in advance of need, for example facial hair and moustaches, get them off now, not next week or the week after. Uh, quarantine yourself now if you live in a major city, or at least reduce your exposure to people as dramatically as possible. Stop making excuses, well I can't take the, afford to take the time off work. Yeah okay, guess you can afford to take the risk of dying from the infection, or giving it to your family when we know it's out in the community and we know it's spreading. What we don't know is how infectious it's spreading, how rapidly it's spreading. We don't know that. We do not know. We can look at China and make guesses. What we're going to do is we're going to see it happen here. In Toronto, in New York, in Chicago, in LA, in San Francisco, in Des Moines. Anywhere that has an airport, that has international travellers, or takes travellers from a hub, the world is seriously interconnected. With an airborne, you cannot isolate flights out of China today and think you're getting yourself any protection at all. 
that's part of the mental attitude of complacency. And I'm going to probably possibly do a video on that. See, if it's a Chinese issue, okay, and we have a couple of cases here, but we've got them isolated, and for some reason they never talk to anybody, did anything, and we're on top of this. Every case that comes, we're going to be on top of it. But the big inspection is in China, and it may or may not come here like that. Wow, really? Think about it. Think about it. Use your logical brain. You don't need to be a scientist or an epidemiologist. Airborne infections that are human to human, unless it weakens an infection, which it easily could, is going to spread. You can't seal it off now. It's too late. Doodles. Come on, Beggy. Come on. This is a Bad Terrier 2020 production.